name is Georgia Carr and today I'll be talking about how Dove influences their consumer attitudes and be comparing this to Aveeno. My C number is C3531445. Hi, my name is Alicia Haith and I'll be talking about family and reference groups in relevance to Dove. My candidate number is C3533347. Hi, I'm Hannah Wilkins and I'll be talking about self-esteem in relation to Dove and the competitor of Nivea. My C number is C3528337. Dove is a skincare brand that focuses on empowering people. They do this through their well-renowned Real Beauty campaign, which broke out in 2004. Dove's marketing is all surrounded by the Dove Real Beauty pledge, which features real women, never models. We portray women as they are in real life, and we help girls build body confidence and self-esteem. The consumer thinks, feels and does. It is a learned belief which develops with age and experience. People are not born prejudiced or with attitude. These beliefs are formed over time due to their exposure to different environments. It is important to understand attitudes as they can form mental heuristics for consumers and influence the decision-making process which guides the consumer's behaviour to purchases. Attitudes are classified into the following functions. The utilitarian function, the value expressive function, the ego defensive function and the knowledge function. Before the Real Beauty campaign, society had different attitudes towards beauty standards. Skeen reported that companies often communicated with consumers using images of their ideal self to encourage a change in behaviour and conversions. Initially, Dove wanted to shape consumers' attitudes into believing their products would enhance their consumers' appearance, as shown in the sexualised and stereotyped adverts from the 90s. However, in 2004, after investigating beauty standards, Dub discovered that only 2% of women considered themselves beautiful. The Real Beauty campaign worked towards changing this attitude by influencing the consumer's effective component, utilising highly emotional advertisements with intimate statements and stories from the public, which encouraged a change of attitude and influenced the market to have different attitudes and perceptions towards beauty standards in society. A research from a Harvard psychologist, Nancy Eckhoff, reveals that after the Dove Real Beauty campaign, more women today describe beauty on a wider variety of qualities outside of just looks and appearances. Every attitude has three components which are represented in the ABC model. These are the affective, behavioural and cognitive components. Dove appeals to a consumer's effective attitude. This component explores how consumers can have effectively based attitudes when being exposed to an emotive brand as it can influence how they feel. Therefore, the attitudes towards the black brand has stemmed from the emotion it has created. Dove competes in the oversaturated market of skincare. In 2018, skincare products in the UK had a retail value of over 2 million, with 39% of women using an eye cream daily, as reported by Mintel. Therefore, when competing in a competitive, fast-moving consumer goods market, companies must use dis distinctive tactics to stand out and be memorable against their competition. By using an emotional appeal to attract the consumers, rather than a rational appeal, Dove is appealing to the consumer's underlying need for expression, social approval and self-esteem. However, instead of promoting the consumer's ideal self, they are encouraging self-acceptance and confidence. This is influencing the consumer's attitudes towards Dove as the campaign is affecting consumers with both high and low self-esteem, encouraging them to have a positive feelings about themselves, therefore creating a strong emotional relationship with Dove because of the campaign's message of acceptance and self-inclusion. Seigel reported that Dove's use of inclusive marketing in the Real Beauty campaign is effective as it elevates the stories and voices of people that are unrepresented in society, therefore creating deeper connections with consumers and influencing positive social change. Dove delivers a message which people from all demographics can resonate with regardless of ethnicity, age or size, creating content which truly reflects a diverse audience. Kelman's 1961 identification theory highlights how consumers are more likely to listen to the recommendations of an influencer who shares a similar image or behaviour to their own. By using real women in the Real Beauty campaign, Dove activates pre-existing schemas related to the appearance of the body which would alter the perceptions people have towards models. Competing brands such as Aveeno have used celebrity endorsements alongside Hyder's balance theory to make a connection between the products and the consumer via the use of a recognisable and familiar 
Celebrity endorsement. This theory suggests that as an individual, we see consistency in our beliefs to maintain a psychological balance. Therefore, Avino has used this to their advantage by associating Jennifer Aniston to their product, therefore creating the association with the product and Jennifer, which encourages the consumer to have favourable attitudes towards the product as assuming they already have positive attitudes towards Jennifer Aniston, therefore maintaining the balance in the consumer's mind. This theory was also supported by Woodside and Chibat in 2001. A weakness to using a celebrity endorsement, however, is that the negative perceptions about Jennifer Aniston could impact the consumer's perceptions of Avino. If a consumer had negative feelings towards her, the only way to achieve a balance in Hyder's balance theory would be to create negative associations with Avino also. Therefore, companies must carefully select an endorser who they feel best would resonate with the consumer as supported by Oakley in 2015. Minotaur describes that the self-comfort refers to beliefs a person holds about their attributes and how they evaluate these qualities. Industrial Beauty Campaign focuses on, on self-esteem, self-congruence, self in the body. Dove uses these theories to advertise their brand through self-esteem advertising. Dove can be seen to have done this through their Real Beauty Campaign. Within this campaign, they use different shaped bottles to represent different women, creating bottles and advertising them through billboards. This all stems from self-esteem, that Solomon states is the possibility of a person's self-concept. A journal article written by Dahl suggests that individual differences in self-esteem have been shown to influence reactions to the social comparison when exposed to images of models in advertising. Dove wants to break down the barrier of the social comparison theory of Fistinger 1954. No upward or downward comparison, everybody is beautiful, no matter what shape or size shown through the bottles. Charlotte Rogers from Marketing Week, with research from Kantar, has researched gaps within brands for people with high and low self-esteem. A UK-based sample of 2,000 women were asked to rate 40 mass-market brands through the lens of self-esteem, with high self-esteem ratings taken from low to identify gaps as shown in screen. Boots scored highly as an inclusive, accessible brand that appeals to shoppers by showing a varied portrayal of women within its advertising, whereas brands with a large gap such as Zara scored negatively, as they only represented and regulated with a smaller percentage of the population. This demonstrates how Dove wants to be positioned in the mind of the customers. The research into different brands and their score demonstrates a need and favourability for brands to be able to sell to mass markets and not segment and neglect certain customers. Therefore, Dove as a marketer is using self-esteem advertising to change the product attitudes and in turn convinces audiences that consuming their product will increase in confidence and that will boost their self-esteem. As outlined through Sergey, as he suggests, from a self-esteem perspective, the customer will be motivated to purchase a positively valued product to maintain a positive self-image. Moreover, millennials are moving away from the idea of standardised beauty image. This can be shown through the bar chart on screen. As Nintel suggests that young women are rallying against Photoshop images and demanding that beauty be more inclusive. Related to self-esteem and another factor within the self, the self and the body. Solomon Nintel describes that body images refers to customers' subjective evaluation of their physical self. Nintel demonstrates that 24% of 7-15 to 15 year olds say that they worry about their appearance. Furthermore, Solomon expresses that, while many people perceive a strong link between self-esteem and appearance, some customers unfortunately exaggerate this connection even more, and sacrifice greatly to attain what they consider to be a desirable body image. In April 2018, the Dove Self-Esteem Project announced a two-year partnership with Cartoon Network's show, Steven Universe, to deliver messages of self-esteem and body confidence to young people. With short two-minute videos with the characters from the show displaying positive messages around body confidence and inclusivity. The partnership allows for children of a young age to overcome insecurities and changing ideals over time, growing up loyal to Dove and understanding it is a brand that represents them. A competition to Dove is Nivea, who took a different approach to their marketing campaign. Nivea marketed their National Fairness Cream in an opposite manner to Dove by creating a gap shown in their advertising, from a customer's actual self to ideal self. Within the advert, a woman uses the cream to give herself lighter skin, creating her ideal self through the theory of the looking glass created by Cluley, 1902 and how she wants others in society to perceive her. This is shown through a male commenting on her beautiful skin once she'd used the product and become her ideal self and the self she wants others to see her through. This was reported by The Drum. However, the BBC reported that unlike Dove's campaign that was praised for inclusivity, neither received backlash. A model stated, celebrate us as a we are instead of asking us to adhere to untainable and racist ideals, demonstrating that their target audience needs were not met and women wanted to be seen for who they were. Nivea's latest campaign was titled, Discover Why We're Always There For You focusing on the different aspects of life, showing a variety of different people from young to old, different ethnicities and races, demonstrating their inclusivity and representing all walks of life. 
as dubbed as in their Real Beauty campaign. As marketers, we must be aware of the different factors that influence our purchasing behaviour. Our purchasing decisions can easily be impacted by the world around us, including the people that we associate ourselves with. The life cycle plays a huge influence on our purchasing behaviour. Consumers' wants and needs change depending on their stage in the life cycle. Empty nesters, those whose children no longer live at home, are likely to have a higher disposable income. This then changes their spending habits as they can buy more materialistic wants. Opinion leaders allow the consumer to make judgments on a product or service before deciding whether they're going to purchase or not. Innovators will try products out and encourage consumers to buy products through their experiences. Baby Dove entered the market in roughly 2016. By 2018, they managed to have 4% of the market. Leading brands Johnson's and Sudocrem both lost between 4 to 7% of their market share, which was an implication of Baby Dove entering the market. A vast majority of Dove's marketing campaigns are targeted to the female population, which solidates that their key consumer focus is women. Dove are aware that women have a higher power and influence within consumer spending. Forbes magazine reported that women drive 70 to 80% of all consumer purchasing through a combination of their buying power and influence. This links in with the halo effect. This idea supports brand loyalty and understands that when we like a product or brand, we are likely to stick by it and only buy things from that product line. Dove's marketing campaigns rely on their real beauty campaign. Their Baby Dove campaign states there are no perfect mums, only real ones. This links to their famous Real Beauty campaign and allows them to connect deeply with their new and existing mothers of the world, who the product is actually designed for. To Dove, making this product secures loyalty, as consumers are likely to continuously buy this product along with their other products. Already mentioned in the Dove Real Beauty campaign, it is obvious that Dove have a key value for making everyone embrace and accept who they are. This has allowed Dove to release different products for their consumers depending on their stage within the life cycle. Dove's product line consists of Baby Dove, Dove for Men, their normal Dove collection and Pro Age collection. In 2010, Dove released their Dove for Men collection featuring deodorant and shower gel designed for the more mature man. This was the first company to release a product for this age range, a 40 plus. They detected a gap in the market and developed a new product to fit the consumer's needs. Dove also have a focus on the female market. The Female Economy report from Silverstone and Sayre states, Beauty products and services promote a sense of emotional well-being in women. Those we talked with who spent a higher portion of their income on cosmetics felt more satisfied, successful and powerful. They also reported lower levels of stress, even if they worked longer hours. With Dove having the Real Beauty campaign, they are reaching out and promoting the value of self-love. This then encourages consumers to buy as they have a sense of relationship with the brand. Opinion leaders help shape our judgments and opinions on products and services. A reference group is an actual or imaginary individual or group conceived of having significant relevance upon an individual's evaluations, aspirations or behaviour. This links in with the use of opinion leaders. When we see someone who inspires us or who we have a desire to be, then we will value their opinions on a product or service. Dove do not use too many influencers within their marketing campaigns, and when they do, they make sure they are going to display the right message to stick to their own brand values. A highlight on their Instagram stories features an influencer called Gabby Fresh, who has over 700,000 followers on the platform. Gabby Fresh is known as a style blogger and body positive advocate. Dove will work with people like Gabby as she conveys the same message as Dove and she encourages a positive self-image. There has been a shift between reaching the consumer through means of a TV advert to now reach them through the use of social media and with the help of influencers. Nivea use more influencers than Dove as they work alongside makeup influencers to show their products in action. This is an example from at Charlotte Lum who is showing off how the Nivea makeup remover works. Using influencers increases attention, but can also make some consumers feel like they're not being appreciated. With Dove having a focus on real beauty, they only work with influencers who possess the same interests as them, such as Gabby Fresh. Dove base most of their campaigns on the use of real people, rather than famous people or well-known influencers. 
They strive to improve people's self-esteem. In conclusion, Dove's marketing campaigns has allowed the brand to have a unique selling point in the market. By changing the attitudes and perceptions of consumers, Dove has successfully created emotional attachments to their campaigns, whilst their self-esteem advertising has contributed to creating positive social change Consumers want to be associated with Dove and what Dove resembles. This is also highlighted through the use of influencers within reference groups.